Water is political, controversial, and needed for human survival. Therefore, its use and governance can lead to different kinds of conflicts. There are different ways to address these conflicts. Water law is one of them. My name is Gabriela Cuadrado Quesada, and I am a senior lecturer in water rights and justice at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I will explain the role of international and national water law and its implication for conflict resolution. So how is water political? Decisions about water are often political. Who has water and who doesn't have water is often a political decision. The same is true regarding to where water flows and where infrastructure is built. Water is often perceived as scarce, polluted, or otherwise challenged. Can lead to competition over water, disagreements over how to govern water, conflicts over how to allocate water, and this can be at the national and also international level. Then, in order to address this issue, it is important to discuss water law. Water law is the field of law dealing with the use and distribution of water. The oldest water laws have their origins in the earliest human civilizations, such as the Chinese, the Hindus, the Egyptian, and the Mesopotamian. Historically, water law has developed closely connected to historical, geographical, and political context. However, recently, water law includes common forces or principles that have a spread, for example, sustainability or best available science. In the same manner that we have law at the national level, we have law at the, law at the international level. International water law is based on decades of legal thinking and practice. International law is also the result of a long evolutionary process that was and still is shaped by environmental, socioeconomic, political, and social developments. It brings in ideas, concepts, and principles from other disciplines, such as hydrology, hydraulics, ecology, political sciences, and sociology with the aim to respond to the transboundary water challenges. There are more than 300 surface water courses and more than 400 aquifers transcend the boundaries of nation states. It represents a way to work together and create cooperation. Perhaps the main important aspects to mention when discussing international water law are its core principles. The first principle is equitable and reasonable utilization. This principle entitles each state sharing a water course to a legal right to utilize that water course in a reasonable and equitable manner. This principle is based in the concept of limited territorial sovereignty, which allows each riparian state to make reasonable use of the shared water under its jurisdiction while respecting other riparian rights. Principle number two is not significant harm. This principle is not meant to forbid any harm. However, it aims at tackling serious harm and contains a due diligence obligation. If despite taking all appropriate measures, significant harm is caused, the state that caused the harm should take all appropriate measures to mitigate and eliminate it in consultation with the affected state. Finally, principle number three is cooperation. This principle entails that riparian states are responsible to cooperate with other states in governing international water courses. This principle embraces a range of procedural obligations that reflect customary international law. These procedural principles include regular exchange of data and information 
and prior notification of plant measures. In conclusion, it is essential to understand the nature of the system to be regulated and the relations humans have had with the system through centuries, for example, over exploitation or pollution. It is also very important to understand the growing and cumulative nature of the problems associated with the way we use and abuse water, which lead to conflict. It is crucial also to appreciate the causes of conflict and the underlying drivers or pressures, including the role of power and politics at shaping these drivers. The nature of conflict will differ in different types of contexts, as will the drivers affecting the conflicts. Therefore, solutions have to be tailor-made to each situation. However, core international and national water law and its core principles can considerably play an important role in addressing conflicts.